Sports Source is brought to you by Fast Frame with exciting Vol sports prints now available. You are watching East Tennessee's first and only year-round sports talk show on television. This is the Sports Source with your host, John Pennington. Good Sunday morning. Welcome into the Sports Source. If we get a packed show for you, we're talking Vols basketball. What a great week. Are they on the bubble now in the NCAA talk? Their RPI keeps jumping. We'll discuss the Vols basketball situation and where it could go. We'll talk about Josh Dobbs and Cam Sutton down at the Senior Bowl, what the response to their week of work was. We'll talk about uh, Tennessee recruiting, a ton of recruiting information today, including, do you remember last year's roster in terms of who the big contributors were? Who were the three stars, the four stars, and the five stars? Might be interesting. You might not remember some of those. We'll have those broken down. And then, of course, a look ahead. Who's coming to Tennessee? Who might be going elsewhere? And of course, we'll also mention Todd Helton. As I said, packed show. Let's dive in. First segment brought to you by Tenova Healthcare. If you find yourself in need of medical attention, you can always find a Tenova facility nearby in East Tennessee. Award winning staff, top flight equipment, and instruments. Tennessee, Tenova, I'm sorry, Tenova can provide the care you need to get you back to 100%. Tenova.com is where you can learn more about Tenova. Healthcare, a company I trust very, very much. I also trust these guys. I don't know if it's very much, but I trust them. We got Mark Pancratz right here. Enjoy having you with us. Josh Ward, or, or Josh Ward. Josh Ward. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> it's kind of a Josh Ward is right here. Kind of my ESPN it's branding voice. Branding right there. Good to have you. Mike Griffith back with us. Mike Strange down there. Good to have you with us, guys. Uh, the Tennessee basketball teams won three games in a row. Mississippi State, then knock off Kentucky, hand them their first SEC loss of the year. Then really handle from start to finish a Kansas State team that came in at 15 and 5. Um, their RPI is rising. We'll get to that in a second. All things are looking good, but I do want to I, I want to emphasize the fact that it is a roller coaster sport. With the exception of about 10 percent who are always good and 10 percent who are always bad, most everybody else in college basketball is up and down. Just 18 days ago, we were talking about Tennessee having a three-game losing streak. Mm -hmm. So. That said, now that we've tempered it a little bit, Mark Pankratz, what's been the key to this turnaround? Well, I think one, Jordan Bone has gotten healthy in, which is uh, our backcourt is getting more experience. We're starting to take care of the basketball. It, the two wins this past week, we only had 10 turnovers per game on average, and, and that was a big problem for us. And, and we're learning how to dominate the paint. Our, our young guys uh, are really establishing themselves, and I throw Robert Hubs in there as well as far as dominating the paint. I mean, we are outscore a, a Kentucky team and a, a ranked Kansas State team by 28 points in the point in the paint the last two games. So uh, we're just playing really good basketball, and, and part of it is Hubs and Grant Williams working together on those blocks has been impressive. And to be doing that with an undersized team, I don't think a lot of people went in there and said, yeah, going into the year, oh, they're going to dominate everyone in the paint. But I think it was uh, Ben Howland last week who kind of made the comment, well, then they make up for their lack of height with their, their width. Mm -hmm. These guys are strong and, and from side to side. Uh, thoughts on Tennessee's turnaround, anybody? Well, I, I think uh, Grant Williams has just been a what a discovery in the in the paint. Uh, what he's able to do as a freshman, and I think Admiral Schofield kind of getting him back in the flow has helped in in the paint in the post where they're at such a size disadvantage. And, and then Lou Evans, you know, who yeah. everybody kind of turned their nose up at for two months, uh, has has you know fi found a way to help him too. John, I think you got to give Rick Barnes a lot of credit. And, you know, the jury was out, I think, after year one. Certainly people wondered what Rick Barnes could do. But you take a look at this roster. Not only is it one of the smallest teams in the country, but it's one of the most inexperienced teams in the country. Add to it, they kicked off maybe their most explosive scorer, Dietrich Mostella, yeah. and they're still winning basketball games. And what gives them a chance is there's room for growth still. And you've also lost John Fulkerson, who was really playing bigger than anyone when he went down uh, in terms of he was the guy that was playing tall. Uh, Josh, uh, your thoughts on this Tennessee basketball turnaround? Yeah, I think there are more players that you can rely on with Tennessee's basketball team right now. Like early in the season, Lou Evans couldn't get on the floor, and when he did, he wasn't very productive. Now he plays a big role in, in what Tennessee's trying to do, mentioning Admiral Schofield. To be suspended earlier in the season in big games, now playing a very important role. And then really, I would say, playing smarter basketball, that goes to taking better care of, of the ball, and then tougher basketball. If you're undersized, Grant Williams, Admiral Schofield, those guys. Robert Hubbs, he scores a lot. He hits tough shots. 
you have to be a physical basketball team to do that. All right, one thing that's being discussed right now is Tennessee possibly being on the NCAA bubble. Uh, let's take a look at their their resume, if you will, here. Uh, bubble worthy, overall record 12 and nine. You don't count the win over Chaminade, which was division two. Four and four in the SEC, their home record good. Road neutral record, not good. Uh, record versus top 50 opponents, two and seven. You beat Kentucky and you beat Kansas State. RPI was 47 before the Kansas State win. Uh, the graphics, I did those last night, so the graphics have been changed. It's now 41 is the new RPI, according to the NCAA. So you're one of the top 41 teams in the country. Ken Pomeroy, who's kind of the guru of basketball stats, his computer system has them ranked number 38. And then speaking of Ken Pomeroy, let's take a look at what he says about the SEC, where all these teams are. Tennessee fourth behind Kentucky, Florida, and South Carolina. And then there's a drop. You don't have, you've got Arkansas in the top 50, Georgia 51. And then it falls off, interestingly, and we'll talk about this later in the show, Auburn and Mississippi State, two teams that everyone said, why can't Tennessee recruit like that? Well, right now, their RPI or their Ken Pomeroy ranking, nowhere near what Tennessee's is. Uh, Tennessee, of course, will see Auburn later this week, and we'll talk to Mr. Pankratz about his former coach, Bruce Pearl, and how badly he'll want to beat Tennessee this week. But you look at that, Mark, uh, the data is 90% of the NCAA tournament selection. There's about 10% where you go in saying, I, I have no clue what they're going to do. But 90% of it you can predict pretty easily going into Selection Sunday. With that resume, and with 10 games to go, and only a couple of teams, South Carolina and Kentucky both on the road, that's all Tennessee has left in the top 50. Do you think it's fair to put Tennessee on the tournament bubble, or is it more of an NIT Goal. Well, I, I, sure, we can put them on the bubble with 10 games left, and we go eight and two, and two of those maybe a Kentucky, South Carolina. Uh, I think a lot of it will determine how far we go in the SEC tournament. That'll be part of it. Even if we go eight and two, you still got to make a run in the tournament. Uh, do I think they'll get there? Honestly, no, but I think they're, they're, shoot, they've earned themselves right in that bubble the way they've been playing. Rick Barnes didn't blow it off last night. He said, sure, okay, we'll talk about it. <laughs> yeah, you can put us in there. Uh, he didn't dive in, but he also didn't shoot it down. Thoughts, is Tennessee on the bubble? Yeah, the team that they've got to get ahead of is Arkansas. We knew when Arkansas beat them in Thompson Bowling Arena, what a pivotal loss that could prove to be. Even though you showed those numbers, John, Arkansas in the top 30 of the RPI that was released today. So that's the team Tennessee's kind of trying to position around. Does the SEC even get four teams right. in the NCAA tournament? And if so, Tennessee's got to hurdle Arkansas. And if not, who do they add to their staff next year to fix basketball? <laughs> Every year they add some new special assistant to the AD who's they bring guys in from networks, they bring guys in from the NCAA Tournament Selection Committee, and yet we sit here every spring saying, will the SEC get four people in, four teams in? Uh, Josh and Mike, your thoughts on this team? More realistic to look to the NIT, is it not? That, that's what I would think, but uh, even a couple of weeks ago, I was pretty dismissive of just bringing up the NCAA tournament idea, right. and, and now I think that it's worthy of being discussed because the numbers that we just showed you, and Tennessee's put itself in that position this week getting wins against Kentucky and Kansas State. They're really must wins if you want to be in that conversation just because the, you know, the lack of opportunity to get uh, quality wins. You know, they, they won three in a row, but they've also four out of five now. They've played really well. If you go back, the, the, the exception was that Ole Miss game, yeah, but then you go back before that and Vanderbilt. So they four out of five now, they, they've looked good. I want to see them go on the road, Auburn and Mississippi State this week, and see what they do on the road. Even though those aren't big RPI teams or anything, I want to see them win, win a couple of road games, and then I'll start putting them on the bubble. Absolutely. Well, and the way the SEC you said must wins, the SEC set up to where you have you, you can't have losses. You can't well, have exactly. losses versus some of these other teams because they just kill your resume if you go to a Mississippi State and lose. You've yeah. only got two games against RPI top 50 teams left in terms of and, and Pomeroy, whichever rank you want to look at there. You've got Kentucky and South Carolina. You can't afford to lose. If you lose those, you almost undo what you did with Kentucky in the first win. Um, and you can't afford to lose to any of these other duds. You've already, you've got some bad losses, even though you've played well in some of your losses against really good, I mean, Gonzaga, Georgia Tech beating uh, Notre Dame this week. Some of these teams you've beaten have done well, but Ole Miss, costly. You look back to the early season, the loss to Chattanooga, um, mm -hmm. the Arkansas loss. Um, you've had opportunities. I don't know that you can make it up with 10 games to go, but we'll see. They're at least, as you said, they're at least on they're the bubble. They're where we thought they'd be. That's exactly right. All right. Uh, hey, by the way, uh, if you agree, disagree, or have a question about anything UT sports-wise, our overtime segment today is you. So tweet us, tweet me your questions. That'll be uh, 
at Sports Source TV. Tweet me, and the guys and I will answer your questions in our overtime segment on SportsSource.tv later today. When we come back, we're going to be, and again, we will be talking about Bruce Pearl versus UT round five. That's later. We're talking about that. Up next, National Signing Day is right around the corner. Josh Ward breaks down six guys to keep an eye on as we head towards Signing Day uh, for the volunteers, and uh, we got a lot more. Come on back on the Sports Source.